example. I'm going to go over how to take data from Ithaca College's motion capture lab and studio and transform that data into something that will work with virtually any 3D modeling or virtual reality environment. I'm, today I'm going to use Blender as the transitional application because Blender is free and accessible on Mac, Windows, and Linux. It's easy, it doesn't even have an install, There's, you, know, you can just literally open it out of the zip file and use it. And even if you use SketchUp or Maya, knowing a little bit about Blender is a good, um, a good thing to have in any 3D modeler's portfolio. We'll begin by looking at what I jokingly would think of as sort of a B minus uh, skeleton that is controlling a 3D modeled character. Okay, this is my first working example. This is when I figured it out myself. And so as you see here, we have uh, what I jokingly call Rainbow Gumby. And Rainbow Gumby is being controlled by an internal skeleton. Now that internal skeleton, and the reason I am showing you this is our beginning example, is because this was me just getting the process to work. I just wanted to have a 3D modeled character that was being controlled by data that I had gotten from our motion capture lab. And so, uh, but if you look at what my skeleton looks like, it's, it would be laughably hilarious to someone who had more experience in, in motion capture uh, data and animation. Because my skeleton sort of looks like this weird hunchbacked monster. Uh, if I, especially let's go into full view here and I can zoom in. And the reason that it does is because this skeleton is linked to markers on the outside of the character's body. And so the reason I'm starting with this is because conceptually you have to understand what you're really getting from our motion capture studio. Okay, I actually think just as a developer and a designer, that the more you understand sort of things like file architecture, the better a designer and developer you will be. So just keep in mind that when you get data from our lab, know what you're really getting. Okay, this is, it's not from our lab, this is just a public domain image of a man wearing a motion capture suit. Notice he has the white markers on the suit. Now, our motion capture lab, what it does is it captures the position of those markers in 3D space, and that's it. Okay, you don't get anything that is actually a skeleton. All right, and so a C3D file, that's what you're going to be getting, will have the location of those things in XYZ. Okay, so you are going to have to decide where the skeleton is stems from out of that data okay it sounds worse than it is but once you understand that that's what the points are it makes a lot more sense i was assuming that i might get something that looked like a skeleton you're not going to be getting something that looks like a skeleton but at the same time it's definitely usable and once you get the process down uh, reasonable to get done so let's go back so here's mine so so as you can see this is quote unquote i'm air quoting the heck out of the word skeleton here because this is actually on the outside right this is more like an exoskeleton so that's a marker that's a marker these two are markers and the person who was wearing the suit obviously had a very thick chest uh because um these markers are so far apart okay and so anyway so just understand that later on in this process we're going to have to accommodate uh, for the fact that we want a skeleton on the inside of the character, but the markers are on the outside. So that's failure or at least problem one. So let's make a new document. Here I go. Oop, not open. Jeez, will Pete. New document. Yes. Okay. And then um, let's go ahead and set it up. Now remember, the very first thing you're going to need to do in Blender is go to User Preferences, search up here for C3D and then turn on C3D import. It's built right into Blender, but they don't, you know, 99.9% .9 of Blender users are not gonna be working with motion capture data. So therefore, it's not on by default. So make sure you turn on C3D import. Once you've got that, I'm gonna to go to import. I'm going to go to import C3D, and I'm, this is not going to work, sort of. Okay, so I will take uh, something like walking and I'm going to import it and now it's going to look crazy and, and this was my first obstacle. 
Now, as you can see there, there's all kinds of mad other pieces of what you could be considered errant data. Okay. And so if you look there, there was a pair of feet walking across at the end. And let me show you that again here. Okay. If you look up in this area, you can actually look towards the end of the animation. Okay. There is a pair of legs that go across, but notice how tall it is. And that's what helped me understand that uh, the second thing, you know, once you, you turn on C3D, C3D import, you take the data that you're going to try to work with, but when you do it, make sure that you pay attention to scale. And the scale is set as you import in the same time. All right. And so, for example, I'll take here best working data. That's the name of the one I've got. And I'm going to take the scale and I'm going to make it 20 times its normal size. And so when now when that comes in, oh, look how nice. Okay, there is my nice working skeleton. Uh, it's not, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be calling it a skeleton. It's my nice working collection of data points um, that uh, our brains turn into a person, but Blender in some ways has no idea that that's a person right now. Okay, and that's what, in some ways that works for us because for example, if we wanted to have two characters fighting with a sword or uh you know we had some sort of non-humanoid shapes maybe with some puppeteering that would all be possible as far as i know because we would just include markers uh in other locations so like for example if we wanted to have two characters fighting with a sword i'd just put markers on the sword and uh this is actually the c3d that we had uh these what i jokingly called the rainbow gumby uh, and so if you look like this person, so if we, there's a person walking here's from the side. So that's the front of their chest. This is along their back here. Okay. And so there's nothing in the middle, right? Like I, it just wouldn't work. And so we have to work around that. Okay. So, and then the other thing I'm going to do is remember that blenders animations default to 250 frames. How much animation do you have? You don't have to use all of it, but in my case, I'm going to use all of it, which this is quite a long piece of walking. And so therefore, I think it goes to like 675. Yes. And so I'm going to tell it my animation is going to be 675 frames long. Back to frame one. Oop. Frame one. Good. Okay. And so, and the other thing I'll mention before we start building the skeleton is remember you're going to need to pick one good frame. All of these points, right, and all those orange dots right there, or almost all of them, are, are little markers that the person in the suit was wearing. Okay, they will move over time. Obviously, that's why we're here. But uh, we are going to be building a skeleton that fits to those dots at a very particular place in time. And so therefore you need to remember where that place in time is. And so, for example, in my own sort of trial and error as I'm solving this process, I kept starting it on like right now, like I would just go, okay, it imported and I drag it back and forth and then I'd be on frame 42 and then I'd start building the skeleton and I'm like, oh no, you know, and then I have to find it again. So I'm gonna use frame one Okay, because, but the problem is that, that on frame one, it's not always uh, the optimal place to build a skeleton. And so, and then if you are, if you have the opportunity to have data captured yourself, make sure you have your performers begin in a T pose, then move and do the motions that you're looking to capture. We, you know, I, I, the people in uh, physical therapy and, and related sciences, they don't care about the T-pose because they're not trying to fit their data to an animated character. They're doing this from a health perspective, not an animation perspective. So the data that they have generally will not have the T-pose, and that makes it harder, as you're about to see, that I'm going to have to sort of work around the fact that this guy did not start in a T-pose. Okay, so, uh, so anyway, back to this. Um, let's begin. I'm going to sort of move the playhead back and forth, and this is what I was talking about. And then I'm also going to see this. Look at this guy. Okay, that is errant data. Okay, and so what you're going to do is now that we're getting serious, is I'm going to start getting rid of those pieces, and then this over here is what's called the outliner. 
And so all of these, see they're not numbered. 51, if I look at that, he's kind of a bad guy. These ones that are moving all over the place, they're numbered. And see the rest of these you can see are actually named according to, uh, you know, these sort of physical therapy sort of descriptors. Okay, and if you don't know what they are, this is a great way of learning uh, some um, good scapula and metatarsal and other things like this. So anyway, but um, from my experience that these ones at the top that are numbered are our bad citizens. And so I literally am just going to delete them uh, one at a time. So doop, doop, delete. 52, I don't know why. And so you, so anything that moves around like that, get rid of it. It's not part of my animation. I don't know what it's doing there. And so, oops. And so I am just going to delete all of these pieces of errant data. And this, by the way, can be fairly time consuming. Okay, now C7, that is the C7 vertebrae. It's the seventh vertebrae. Uh, that's coming down from your head. Now this guy does not unfortunately have a head and so they did not put any markers like the person did not have any markers on a hat for example. And so again that's a physical therapist uh, or I can he's you know someone uh, you know looking at this in a very in a different perspective than an animator who would obviously want to know where the head is. You work with the data you've got. But anyway, so that C7, the C7 vertebrae, that's what, why it's named that way. And the rest of these are named after uh, an anatomical markers. Okay. Well, that C7 vertebrae is where we're going to begin our skeleton. It's not necessarily the center of gravity for the character, but in some ways uh, the body sort of flows downwards from the base of the neck, if you want to think of it um, that way. And so, uh, sort of like how a, you know, a mother cat would pick up a baby cat kitten by the scruff of the neck. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to frame one. Okay, I'm going to move this over here for now. And then I am going to switch to object mode. Great, that's where I am. I'm going to go to create tab on the left. I could also go from the top. And then I have to do some precise but simple 3D modeling. Okay. And conceptually, hopefully you know this if you're a 3D modeler, but in case you sort of monkeyed around in Blender, but maybe you didn't really get it, understand that there is a cursor, okay? All of us use a cursor in a word processor all the time. You know, you place the cursor in a word if you missed a letter, you take the cursor and you highlight a word if you want to delete it. Well, in a 3D modeler, there is also a cursor, but the difficulty is that we're working on a two-dimensional screen dictating three-dimensional space. But if you look at this, this little circle here, that is the cursor, okay? And I can actually place that with my mouse. But, like, the problem is, is the depth, right? Like, I can kind of do that, but, like, you know, and that's why sometimes you go to quad view, and I'll put the cursor there in this one, and then I'll just kind of move it up. You know, maybe, and so doing it that way might work. Like if I wanted the cursor, that's a light. See that thing right there? So if I wanted the cursor to go there, I could put the cursor like there and then it, you know, and this. But it's, it's often not a precise science. But the cursor is important because that's how you tell Blender this point. You know, it's like how you as a user communicate with the 3D modeler. I'm interested in this point in space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on C7 and I can just click on it, by the way, over here as well. Uh, to get there, and I am going to say t hill down shift and press S, all right, and that is where we it pops up a little menu, and I can say cursor to the selected. Oh, look at that! My cursor is now on the C7 vertebrae marker. Okay, so if now understand that is a key functionality. To this, and I'll do it again in just a moment. But is putting the cursor on these dots, okay? Because that's all, right now when you import it, all you've got is dots. So we have to make something from the dots. So I put my cursor on that um, piece, and again, I'll move my cursor. How did I do that? I hold down Shift and I type S. Doesn't matter what kind of computer you're on, and I say cursor to the selection. Bow. Okay. Then I'm going to go to create. And under create, I'm going to go down to where it says armature. And notice that that armature is going to stem from the cursor. 
And so we've already begun the process of transforming the three-dimensional data into a working skeleton. Now, when I began this tutorial, I started by showing you my sort of not optimal uh, initial skeleton because, and if you remember, I had bones running along the front and back, and that actually can work to an extent. But let's do it the right way. So I'm going to click on this one and this one. Okay, now those two, if I look on my object graph over here, those are XP. I don't know why they're called that. But anyway, the same Shift S, when I say cursor to selected, now I click the one in the front. When I say cursor to selected, it will put it in the dead center of those two points. Okay, so if there are two points on the outside of the sort of person you see in the 3D data, okay, well, you can move the cursor to the center. And now the reason I would want to do that is because I'm going to return to this bone here, okay. I'm going to press tab, and tab goes to edit mode. Now, in object mode in Blender is when you're moving a whole thing. Edit mode is when you're moving a part of a thing. And I'm going to take, now remember, the beginning of this, that was at the C7 vertebrae. Well, I'm going to take the other end of this bone, that's a bone in the skeleton, and then I'm going to press Shift S again, because Shift S, you're going to see Shift S over and over again in this. And I'm going to say the selected goes to the cursor. Pow. And now the first bone goes from the center of the C7 vertebrae, the, the base of your neck, to a point in the middle of your chest. And we can still have that, that bone controlled by those markers at the front of the chest and on the back. Okay, but by using, by positioning the cursor in between them and then running the skeleton to that point, it helps you balance that load. So let's continue making the skeleton. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, the C7 vertebrae is the base of the sort of the neck. And so let's go out to the shoulders. So again, I'm in edit mode. I'm going to click on that ball and I'm going to press E to extrude out a shoulder bone. Okay, I'm going to play this back and forth and I can see, see there's that C7, see there's a C7 vertebrae, that's a shoulder right there. Well, I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to click on that shoulder point. I'm going to go to frame one because remember we're building this skeleton in frame one and I'm going to do shift S. Okay. Now you might think if I've lost you, don't worry because this is going to get repetitive and it will make sense in a moment because the repetition will help you kind of process. But I'm going to say the cursor goes to that point, to the selected point. So remember that that cursor, we put it on the point. I return to the skeleton and I say tab, tab is how I go. Or I can just do it down here, switch to edit mode. I click on that ball. And where do I want it to go? I want it to go to the shoulder. So I say like that piece, shift S, selected to the cursor, and it goes to that point. Okay, there it is. And then the same thing. So I would just repeat that over and over again. Okay, and so let me do that on the other side. I'll do, I'll do the whole arm here. Okay, so now let's watch it. That, I think that, I'm going to go back to object mode. That, I believe, is the elbow. It is. Okay, and so if you think about it, we have this thing that goes from the shoulder, right? The skeleton goes from the shoulder. Now we're going to go down to the elbow, right? And there's only one point for the elbow. That makes it easy. So I'm going to go to frame one. I have to remember I'm building this skeleton in frame one. I'm going to go to this, and now I'm going to go to shift S. I'm going to put the cursor there, cursor to the selected. Okay, I'm going to go back to the skeleton. I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to press E to extrude another bone from the shoulder. Well, after the shoulder, where does it want to go? I want it to go to the elbow. Well, where's the elbow? Well, the cursor is at the elbow. And so I do shift S and I say selection to cursor. Now, the reason you have to do it this way is because uh, you sort of, I, you know, I, in mentally, 
you kind of just want to say, I just want the end of that bone to go to that point. But the problem is in Blender, you can't have two things selected at the same time. Because, well, you can't have two things selected at the same time. You can't have a piece of one thing and the whole of another object selected at the same time. And so the, the workaround is to use the cursor to mark the point, okay, if you follow me. So now we've got a shoulder, we've got down to the elbow, and then let's watch it. That's, I think, let's see. And so the motion, and that's why I mentioned, like, you have to remember, like, I'm building this skeleton at frame one. Because often for me, visually, to know where the legs are, to know where the arm is, I kind of have to do this. I have to drag it back and forth to play it. And I can say, okay, now I know that is the hand. So I'm going to go to object mode. That's the hand. Okay, right there. And by the way, it'll be sort of selected in here. Right wrist. Okay, that's what, what it is. And so therefore, I'm going to go and I'm going to say shift S. I put the cursor to that. So the cursor is where the right wrist is. Oh, I'm making my mistake though. I'm not on frame one. So I'm going to go back there and I'm going to do it again. Right wrist is selected, shift S. Cursor to the selected. By the way, these things only work if your mouse is hovering over it. This is, that's like, there was a computer called the Silicon Graphics Machine in the 1990s and the interface worked much that way. But anyway, so I do shift S, just make sure your mouse is over this window. Cursor to the selected. Then I'm going to go good back to my skeleton now i'm going to extrude it again so i go to edit mode because that means i'm working inside the object and i'm going to say e to extrude another bone where does that bone go well that was the elbow right here so this i'm going to say shift s selection to the cursor and then that points it at the wrist Okay, so I know that on frame one, my skeleton works perfectly. So that is the right arm. Okay, so let's do the left arm. Now, I also, by the way, could do these all at once. All right, and let me explain. So I could also know that I'm going to the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist. One, two, three. So I could go extrude, extrude, extrude. Then I'm going to take, I'm going to go back to tab. Or object mode I'm going to right click on that shoulder shift s cursor to the selected I put my cursor there I now right click on the skeleton hit tab click the joint and say shift s selection to the cursor pow good and then I go back to object mode which is tab again I right click on the elbow I type shift s the cursor to the selected that's a 3d cursor that marker in space good T hit tab again go to oh, I'm still in object mode and I go back to the skeleton hit tab to go to edit mode shift s selection to the cursor that goes to the elbow pow and that's the other wrist shift s selection to the cursor oops I did that wrong undo cursor to the selection cursor to the selection and then back to the skeleton shift s selection to the cursor so you put the cursor somewhere and then you say this thing now go to the cursor okay and it, it there's a term called semantic saturation when you hear the same thing over and over again and it s starts to lose meaning but effectively that's what uh you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to do you click on a point put the cursor there Go to the skeleton and say point at that cursor all right and so you're going to repeat that throughout the skeleton and like in this case you're going to have to work through like in that case we have two points we want the skeleton in the middle and the same thing is going to be occurring for the pelvis so like if i walk this around i'm going to kind of look for two points at the in the hips let's say and there they are that one oops let me go to object mode so like that one and that one, these two seem to be kind of like dictating the hip area to me. Okay, if I'm going to look where they are in the body, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click those two points. And I'm going to say shift S. Selection cursor to the selected. Pow. Now my cursor is in the center of those two points. And so now when I go to my skeleton here. I'm going to go to edit mode. I'll say hit tab. That does it. And I take that point and I extrude that down. Pow. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Shift S. 
selection to the cursor because I put the cursor between the points. And so now like those two pieces, I said, those are the nice hip points that goes in between. So now this middle piece of the skeleton is going to be in the center of the body. Oh, I made a mistake though. Um, I'm going to go back because I was not in the right frame when I did that. So let me take those two points again. Let me, it's, I can fix it. I'm going to take those two points again, shift S cursor to the selected how it puts it in the middle but I was not on frame one when I did that that's those I yeah, it's a very easy mistake you have to remember where you are building the skeleton in time so I put the cursor in between those two suspected good hip pieces I go back back to my skeleton switch to edit mode and that piece say selection to the cursor and so that way it goes there and so now this middle piece goes through the middle and it will be influenced by the ones on the outside but at the same time the skeleton will be where it should be on the inside okay and so and then quickly let me go through and repeat this I'm just going to go I'm just going to do uh, hip knee ankle toe for the rest and to do it as sort of quickly and easily as possible I'm going to make the skeleton first so I'm going to say extrude that's going to go to the hip that's for the knee that's to the ankle and that's to the toe okay one so hip that's going to go the hip to the knee to the ankle to the toe and these are just I'm just dragging them out so they're convenient now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find a good hip marker so I'm going to go back to object mode not have anything selected and kind of position myself because remember like the only reason we know that this is a person is our brains process these points as a person blender does not know they're a person unfortunately and the name also i guess and so i'm going to take the that these three points right here shift s and i'm going to say cursor to selected there it is okay and then i am going to say click on the object I'm going to say tab to go to edit mode and take that point and say selection to cursor. There it is. Okay, that's on the hip. I'm going to look at the knee. So I'm going to say tab. Oh, I did that on the wrong point. See, I, going back to frame one it is a common error. Okay, you because you have to go back and forth to kind of identify points and you have to remember to return to. So I'm actually just going to be lazy this time. I'm just going to take that hip point right there which I believe that's it right there. Yes, it is a hit point. And I'm going to take that piece of it and I'm going to say shift cursor to selected tab. And I'm going to say selection to cursor and that goes there. And so I'm just going to actually, instead of doing that sort of in between, like if you see, for example, that and that, those are the sides of the knee, the outside. So if I really wanted to be accurate, I'd shift click both of them, make sure I'm on frame one, cursor to the selected, it puts a cursor in the dead center of the knee. These, remember those two points are the outside of the knee. Then I go over to my skeleton, I hit tab, I grab the piece of it, you know, I just sort of stretched out a dummy skeleton. I take that joint and I say shift S, selection to the cursor and that goes at the knee. Then back here, I'm gonna go down and put the cursor at the heel cursor to the selected and I'm going to take now I go back to my object and take that heel joint that I made and say selection to the cursor and then I don't know why that's getting increasingly large that makes no sense and then I'm going to go here to the toe and put the cursor there cursor to selected pow and take this tau and then a okay, selection to cursor bang good and so now and I did it all in frame one and so there is uh, a leg that's going down the middle okay and so but you have to grab multiple points in order to put the kind of the cursor in the middle of those points and then you lock the skeleton to it okay so it's that process of you know positioning the ends of the skeleton remember that the, the whole skeleton is controlled in object mode the parts of the skeleton are controlled in edit mode or pose mode okay and so anyway so there's a leg down that side i will very quickly do the other side right here and so, and then I'm going to say extrude, that's going to go to the hip, extrude one more time for the knee, extrude for the ankle, extrude for the toe. All right, then I'm going to do back to object mode and say that position right there, 
Shift S, cursor to that point. I go to my skeleton. I say no, the hip joint. Shift S, that selection to the cursor. So I grab the hip joint, go to the cursor. I go around, I take the piece of the knee. There's actually, and I gotta be in object mode now. There's these two pieces of the knee, Shift S, S cursor to selected. So the cursor goes in the middle of the knee. I take that dummy now joint that I put there and I say selection to the cursor. Boop, that goes to the knee. Same thing with the ankle. I'll take those two points, Shift S, selection cursor goes to the selected. So I put the cursor at the ankle and then I take, go back to my skeleton and I say, I grab the ankle and I say selection to the cursor. And the same thing for the toe. Cursor to the selected, so I put the cursor there. I take this, selection to the cursor. And so there it is, dun, 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 there is our skeleton that's on the inside of the body. Now the only problem is that's not moving. Wait a minute, how come it's not moving? And that is the last thing you're gonna need to do is to make the skeleton link to those points. And it really isn't that bad either. Okay, and so what you're gonna do is you're going to go to object mode, pick on your skeleton, and then you can go to pose. Oh, look at this, a whole new thing, pose mode. In pose mode, what you're gonna do is that will, that is how normally you take, like if you put a skeleton in, you know, most people who do 3D modeling do not have access to a motion capture studio. And so therefore they will put the skeleton in just as a, an accessory for animation and they will pose by hand. Some studios such as Pixar, by the way, refuse to do motion capture animation. They like to do everything by hand. And so like Ratatouille, for example, has a statement at the end, no motion capture. And so anyway, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this skeleton and we're going to add skeleton modifiers in order to get it to go where we want it to go, right? And it's not too bad. So what I'll do first is I'm gonna go to, I'll take that bone right here. And now this is where naming these things, by the way, over here in the, uh, in the outliner might be good. But we'll start with an easy one. Okay, now this down here, that is the character's uh, left arm. And I know it is pointing at something called the left wrist. L-R-I, right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this bone. I'm going to go, now notice there's the bones. You get these kind of all these different op options here. But I'm going to go to the bone modifiers. I'm going to add a bone constraint. And I'm going to do a damped track. Pow. The target of that damp track is the left wrist. So I look through this list, which is taken directly from the outliner. Left wrist, pow, influence one. That means completely influenced by it. Then I'm gonna go up above and I'm gonna take this bone, which is in pose mode, and I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna add another damp track and it is gonna be modified by the left elbow. Okay, and now knowing which ones, you know, that's why a lot of times I'll just delete a bunch of points because I don't really need all, you'll get more data than you need, depending. Okay, but by adding these modifiers, what do we get? Oh, look at that. That elbow is moving. And so you're going to go through the entire thing. You're going to add for each bone, you're going to tell it which point to which of the points from the C3D data to point itself at by these. And so therefore you build the skeleton in one point in the data, then you add the bone constraints to tell it um, to follow that data through time. Okay, so you build it in frame one, then after you build it, you say now follow it through time. Okay, and then when you're really done, then you go to object mode and in here in an object, you can do parenting and you can see here there is automatic weighting and so you click on the character that you want to be controlled. It's literally this simple. You take the character that you want to be controlled and then you click on this and then you basically parent it and it will make it work. Okay, well, good luck. And I will do a more thorough example in portion two.